Good morning and welcome to St. Bridget of Sweden Parish on this Palm Sunday, the Passion of the Lord. This morning's second collection will be for the Cheshire Prison Ministry. Our Mass this morning is being offered for Alex the Corps. Our celebrant today is Father Romans. Please rise and direct your attention to the rear of the church. Hosanna, Filio David, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Rexis Hosanna in excessis, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O King of Israel, Hosanna in the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. With your My brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem, Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ, the King in exaltation, we, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethlehem, Page and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, The master has need of it, and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found the colt tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace.
Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned my back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you All who see me scoff at me, they mock me with parted lips, they wag their heads. He relied on the Lord, let him deliver him, let him rescue him, if he loves him. My God. Why have you abandoned me? 
indeed many dogs surround me a pack of evil doers closes in upon me they have pierced my hands and my feet i can count all my bones my god my god why have you abandoned me they divide my garments among them and for my vesture they cast a lot. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God. Proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revive all your descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. For those who need to be seated at any moment, please feel free to do so. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not, not during, during the, the festival, festival, for fear that, that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, 
a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been spilled for perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen. I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off and entered the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared for the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the 12, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will have your face shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible the hour might pass him by, he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, 
and he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priests, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard you say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystander said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a, cro a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! And kept striking his head with a reed, and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. 
they pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With them they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him amongst themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. And those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Then at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since, the day of the, since it was the day of the preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of, Ar of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked if Jesus had already died. And when he, le when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of a rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Here we are, five weeks older, five weeks wiser. Are we five weeks holier? We hold these new palms in our hand, signs of new growth and new life. And it begs the question, how have we grown since Ash Wednesday? What have we learned? How has this Lenten season changed me? Now imagine for most of us, the experience of Lent had its highs and its lows. And hopefully we learned something, something about ourselves and something about God, about our capacity to show love and mercy, to walk with Christ in daily life, always in the shadow of the cross, to understand in a deeper way just how much we need God in our lives. Today marks the beginning of the holiest of weeks, a time when we walk alongside Jesus on this path to the cross, reflecting on the depth of his love 
and his sacrifice for our salvation. The imagery of Palm Sunday is rich with symbolism. As Jesus entered Jerusalem, he was greeted with shouts of Hosanna and the waving of palm branches. The crowds hailed him as their king, their long-awaited Messiah. Yet even as they celebrated his arrival, they could not fully comprehend the true nature of his mission. Jesus riding on a humble donkey demonstrated the paradoxical nature of his kingdom. It's a kingdom not of earthly power and glory, but of humility, service, and love. His triumphal entry into Jerusalem foreshadowed the ultimate triumph of his resurrection, but it also foreshadowed the suffering and death that he would endure for us. In the midst of the jubilation of Palm Sunday, we are reminded of the frickleness of human heart. The same crowds that welcomed Jesus with shouts of Hosanna soon turn against him, demanding his very life. Yet in his infinite mercy and compassion, Jesus still chose to walk that path of suffering for the redemption of all humanity. As we journey through this holy week, let us reflect on the significance of the events that unfolded. Let us walk with Jesus through the Last Supper where he instituted the Eucharist. Let us stand with him in that garden of Gethsemane as he agonizes in prayer, surrendering his will to the fathers. Let us accompany him on that road to Calvary where he willingly lays down his life for our salvation. In embracing this journey of Holy Week, we are invited to enter into the very mystery of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. We are called to unite our own sufferings and struggles with his, trusting that through his victory over sin and death, he brings healing and redemption to a broken world. With him, we are called to make this journey ready to listen more attentively to the voice of God speaking in our hearts, to evolve by shedding our old ways of life and embracing the new life that Christ offers, to nourish ourselves with his word and the gift of his body and blood in the Eucharist, and to trust in God's providence and love. In the face of uncertainty and suffering of daily life, we are invited to join Jesus in entrusting our lives to the care of our loving Father. So as we wave our palm branches today, let us not only celebrate Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, but let's also commit ourselves to following him more faithfully along the path that leads to eternal life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we begin this holiest of weeks, we offer our prayers to you, God, who invite us to accompany Jesus in his final days. Give us the courage to pave the way for Jesus to enter our hearts and homes. Hear our prayers as we now offer them. 
For those who are religious leaders, that they give witness to Jesus in a way that draws others to him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are searching for God, that they be given graced opportunities to discover the divine, even when the way is hard. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of our parish and our families who fear lost or estranged from the church, that they will help give us more authentic witness to our faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For anyone we know who may be struggling mentally, financially, or physically, that they will know God's comfort and remain steadfast, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful response of all men and women called to follow Christ and his passion through a vocation to the priesthood or consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all who have died, especially Patrick Sullivan Jr., who recently passed away, and for Alex Lucour, for whom this Mass is offered, may they rest in eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our prayers draw us together as a family of faith, and we ask you, Lord, to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Join the singing our hymn during the preparation, number 485. What wondrous love is this? Number 485.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. He proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet to graciously endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Leonard, our Archbishop, with all the bishops and your entire people. 
Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with St. Bridget of Sweden, our patroness, blessed Michael McGivney, and all the saints, with our sisters and brothers and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Join in singing our first communion hymn, number 356, Ubi Caritas, number 356.
Fifty-four, one, five, four. Oh. 
Let us pray.
Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. Next Sunday, our corporal work of mercy will be the bury the dead. We will keep in prayer at all the masses, our loved ones who have gone before us in faith, praying that they share in the resurrection of our Lord. Please note that there's an announcement in the bulletin that says our offices are closed this Tuesday and Friday, and it has dates in April. We copied and pasted it from last year and didn't update the dates. So it is this Tuesday that our staff will be attending Chrism Mass, and on Friday we will be closed for Good Friday. Confessions this week will be Monday morning, 7.30 to 8.30, and at 10 o'clock on Saturday. So those begin at 10, and once the line is gone, Father and I will go about our day preparing for Easter so please, if you're planning to come to confession on Saturday, please be here by 10 a.m. If not, and you come at 11, expecting there to be a long line, and there isn't, you may not find us there. So Basilica in Waterbury offers confession every day. We do offer it as well by appointment only. Please contact the parish office. The Holy Week schedule is in the bulletin today, so take one home. Plan to join us for these celebrations of the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord. Please note that two things. First of all, on Good Friday, we'll hold the service of the Lord's Passion at 3 o'clock and at 7 o'clock. So unlike years previous where we had stations across in the evening, we are not offering that this year. We'll be offering the service of the Lord's Passion. Also on Easter Sunday, we added a 12 noon Mass, and there will be no 4 p.m. So we have 7.30, 9, 10.30, and 12 noon. There's no men's over 30 basketball this week or next. There's no bingo this coming Thursday. Our Nurturing Seedlings is offering a play date this coming Saturday. Information is in the bulletin. This is for families with newborns to five-year-old children. See information in the bulletin also about the upcoming day trip to the Newport Mansions. Please reserve your spot today. Also, we are looking to see what works best for your schedules for Eucharistic Adoration opportunities. In my article this weekend is the link to a survey. We ask that you take a few moments to fill that out so that we can plan accordingly to schedule adoration at times convenient for our parishioners. Please, if you ordered your palm crosses from the Women's Society, please pick them up immediately following Mass in the school library. And if you ordered flowers from the Knights of Columbus, they are in the foyer of the school. They did have a few extra as of this morning, and they were available on a first-come, first-served basis. So if you didn't purchase any, there might be some left. On behalf of Father Yates, Deacon Jerry, and our entire pastoral team, we extend to you our wishes for a blessed Holy Week and for those traveling a happy and joyous Easter. The Lord be with you. Bow down to the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross who lives and reigns forever and ever. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our prayer for vocations. Heavenly Father, you have created us for a definite purpose. Grant us the grace to know the path you have planned for each of us in this life and to respond with a generous yes. Make my parish my home and my heart fruitful ground for your gift of vocations to the priesthood of Jesus Christ. May our young men respond to your call with courage and zeal. Stir among them a desire and the strength to be good and holy priests. We make our prayer for priestly vocations to you, Father, in the Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mary, Mother of the Church, St. Joseph, Patron of the Archdiocese, Blessed Michael McGivney. If you need extra palm, there is some available only at the front door on your way out today. And as they say, happy palm. Join and sing our recessional hymn, number 413, Jesus Remember Me, number 413.
come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Tell us that